And the little note card had my name and CRNA at the end. It's so funny to me now because I don't even remember doing it. But I had just built that self-concept that this is who I was going to be. The way that works is that you have confirmation bias. The things that you do will only point to what you've told your brain that this is going to be in our future, right? The other thing is just like, the second thing other than visualization is creating new thoughts. Like write a whole bunch of thoughts that you think would be like the thoughts you want to be thinking, right? I always think of people who I look up to as business mentors and they're like, you know, I just thought, okay, this is the amount of money that I'm going to make one day. What am I going to be doing? How am I going to be talking? Who am I going to be, you know, associating with? How am I going to be showing up and serving people? Who am I going to be, right? Right. Another example is even like before you became a mom, like, you know, when you're going through and like buying the cute little stuff for the crib and like decorating the nursery, you're just like creating new thoughts like, oh, I'm going to be so awesome. I'm going to like sit here with my baby. It's going to be so fun. I'm going to like have all these activities and I'm going to do all these things like you're creating new thoughts because like those thoughts like you didn't know how to be a mom, right? You have to like create the self-concept of being a mom. Then I want you to take that thought and try it on. So I always tell my clients, it's like you're trying out a new outfit and you've kind of gotten used to a certain outfit. And now it's like, okay, what about this outfit that like says like, I'm a great mom or I am living a balanced life. I am a woman who takes time for herself. I am a woman who communicates my needs. I am a woman who... Instead of being resentful, I share my struggles with the, the working load of motherhood and, and the, the unseen mental load, right? I'm a woman who communicates with my spouse. I'm a woman who chooses intentionally to spend my time doing only things that serve me. I'm a woman who says yes to the things that fuel me and no to the things that don't serve the greater good of my family. So you try that thought on, right? And then you practice it. And the reason you practice it is that you're providing the evidence for your prefrontal cortex, right? How I like to think about it is like when your brain offers you that you are incapable of doing something, I like to remind my brain like, I know, I like, I know that's what you're telling me, but also like, look at all these amazing things I've done. Like, look at this tiny human that I'm growing. Look at this husband that is thriving. Look at my marriage. Like, look at my life. I am obviously capable of like creating things and succeeding because I've already done it before. The problem sometimes when you want to start creating new beliefs is that your brain will go to its default and that is the motivational triad. The primal brain was programmed to avoid pain, seek pleasure, and conserve energy. So, of course, if you start telling your brain that you want to be a woman who picks no battles instead of picking her battles, your brain's like, yeah, but what are we going to do when your husband's like yelling? Are you just going to like walk away? Like, that's uncomfortable. Like, why would you want to do that? Or, oh, you want to start a new business? Aren't you happy with your job? Like, what if you fail? Your brain is doing what it's supposed to do, right? Or like sometimes when your brain's like, Why would you start a new hobby? Like, it's better to just Netflix and chill, right? Remember, Netflix and chill is conserving energy. Your brain's like, if we go out there and do the scary thing, we could literally get eaten by a tiger or a lion. Or we might like miss out on going to gather and hunt for food tomorrow because we're going to be too tired, right? Your primal brain has still not realized we are living in the 21st century. And that's okay. You can just offer it. It's fine. I got your brain. I know you're freaking out. It's okay. We're going to be just fine. The third thing that I mentioned earlier is taking massive action and writing yourself a letter from the future. I do this especially with my clients who are in business and they have like all these amazing goals. And I say, okay, you want to accomplish this thing. Like you see yourself making this amount of money five years from now, or you see yourself weighing this amount of weight a year from now. Write yourself a letter from then and tell yourself what are all the things that we did to get here? Like what were we believing on purpose until it was like inevitable, right? What am I believing on purpose about myself as a mother 
until like overwhelm no longer exists for me until like struggling in my relationships and not making time for myself no longer exists for me right because you don't go from I never have time for myself I never create time for myself to oh look I have two hours every day for me right like there has to be some sort of thought process changing a mindset shift that is going to happen in order for you to get to that point. And so taking massive action from the future is kind of just like giving your brain evidence like, look, we could do all these things. We have the ability to do these things and we can create such an amazing life, right? And then your mind ninja, the motivational triad, right? So if your brain starts telling you, well, we need to avoid pain, you're like, just go to the worst case scenario. Like, for example, going back to my example about like showing up on social media and sharing things that have been in my heart that I think will benefit somebody. If my biggest fear is to avoid pain, what is the feeling that I'm trying to avoid, right? And the feeling that I'm probably trying to avoid is like shame or embarrassment or people criticizing me and that would create like shame for me. But if I sit in the thought, like, how long am I going to be in that shame, If you say no to something because it doesn't serve you and your brain's like, great, they're never going to invite you again, you can be like, what is the worst thing if I feel shame today that's not going to be there tomorrow? Especially when you're like, how do you even know how long you're going to feel shame? How many hours of the day are you going to feel that feeling so that it just so much like scares you that you don't think it, right? Like when you start questioning those things, your brain's like, oh, actually, we felt shame before. We didn't die. Instead of just being like, I don't want to feel shame. I don't want to feel boredom. I don't want to feel discomfort. I want my life to be comfortable, right? And going back to the principle of the fact that life is 2020, you are once in a while going to feel some really uncomfortable emotions and if you can just realize that it's okay if I feel this feeling it's not forever it's like it's okay I just want you to be so clear with the negative feelings that you're like okay you know what it's fine I'm Shira Bergbauer and you're listening to an excerpt from the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast You can listen to the whole episode wherever you get your podcasts and look out for new episodes out every Monday. You're doing a great job, Mama. I'll see you next week. Bye now.